Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first ever episode of the Two and a Half Cents podcast. I'm your host, Raining Bravens, and I'm joined here by the former military sergeant, Bradley, or as I like to just call him, Sergeant. How's it going? It's good. This is the third time we've had to do this, so I don't know how to, I don't know how else to go about it. He's not Let's lying, see. guys. We had two runs at this. The first time it didn't work out. The second time, Discord totally pooped out on us. So this is our third go at it. But we only recorded about five minutes in each time. So you know what they say: the third time's a charm. Um, so welcome to the stream. We're also being joined here by Chris. How's it going, Chris? Hey, what's up? So. Um, Again, I clarified this earlier in the previous two recordings, but I will say again how much this podcast means to me. It means so much to me that I spent the last two and a half hours missing out on some precious sleep I could have had because I worked a day shift. Um, just uh, be- meal prepping, playing some Ace Combat 7, just kind of killing the time until it's midnight. You guys see... Um, this is going to be an issue that we have to run into or I have to run into mainly because I live on the west coast and both of these gentlemen live on the east coast so I'm at the mercy of their schedule so we decided to uh, record this podcast at midnight eastern time uh, making that about uh, 9 p.m my time well it's 9 30 now but um I, I I enjoy doing podcasts. I've had some experience with it back in 2017. If you guys remember the NFL Talk Live podcast, uh, I enjoy just having conversation. I've had people tell me that they show up to my streams sometimes, not just to watch the gameplay, but just to hear the banter. They love hearing the banter between me, Sergeant Kicker, and Chris. Uh, by the way, shout out to uh, Lizard for suggesting this idea that the three of us make a podcast. Um, there's an interesting dichotomy that you'll begin to notice between the three of us because we all have uh, different political standpoints and different things we believe in, and uh, but we do have some commonalities. Uh, that commonality is that we are three hardworking blue-collar men that uh, have re- very real concerns about things of the world around us, um, and we hope to get into some of those on the stream. Some of them might be sports, some of them might be political. It's really a uh, cornucopia, if you will, of different topics and ideas we have, and we hope to get them out there. Um, and if it's something you like, we we could probably keep the podcast going. At least that's my plan. Are you on the board with that, Sarge? Yeah. I mean, why not? So, um, <laughs> if it works, it works, right? I, I like that idea. I like I like the <laughs> idea of taking a chance you know columbus did look what happened he discovered america but, actually uh, he didn't discover anything fake news he accidentally washed fake up on the news or some you crap. are the enemy After of the, people. the vikings had already been there also russian people crossing across the uh the ice you are fake news you are the enemy Canada. of the people now yeah. um so he didn't discover anything he rediscovered it Look at that okay Fine, but let's agree that he took a chance, and we're also taking a chance with this podcast. Um, you also thought he landed in India. This is true. Yep. So this is true. Hey, but you know, I didn't have Google Maps back then, so I'm going to throw him a, a freebie with that one. Now, um, because this is probably the first time a lot of you guys are hearing my voice or uh, Sergeant voice or Chris's voice, I'm going to let everyone give a brief introduction. I know you already kind of did, but Sarge, tell us. Uh, a little bit about yourself. Hey, for the third time, my name is Sergeant Ass Kicker. I do. I just started doing YouTube streams. It's been fun. Um, I've been following this guy on YouTube for longer than I care to admit. When I started watching Raven, he was at triple digits, maybe on subs. That's um, all right. <laughs> and I'm a Steelers fan, so I initially came into his channel to. Uh, make fun of him because he's a Ravens fan and he took it so I kept going just stuck around you gotta be honest though I was a good sport about your criticism you came in here with full intentions of trolling me to death but I took it on the chin and I said you know what you are welcome here no matter how incorrect (laughs) you are with your opinions (laughs) yeah it was something like that (laughs) <laughs> Something along those lines. Well, welcome. I uh, count it an honor to uh, do this podcast with you. And uh, Chris, our half cent, how are you? Well, you got to be like that. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just kidding. That, you, that you're not job. You're not our half cent. Uh, obviously, it's, it might not be you, at least. I'm not going to 
completely dispel the idea that it's you. But anyway, um, because again, it's a lot of people's first time hearing your voice that don't normally show up to my streams. Chris, tell the uh, viewers and listeners a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, I started following Raven about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm an avid sports fan. So that drew me to his channel because he does a lot of sports gaming. And uh, of course, his team lost to my team in the Stanley Cup Finals. So oh, here we go. I've been calling him ever <laughs> Here we go. Uh, guys, if you didn't know, uh, we have, like I said, a lot of different opinions and ideas on here. Uh, Sarge is a big Steelers fan, which, number one, I don't know how we're doing a podcast with him. Um, so there's that kind of difference there. But also, Chris is a major, major Washington uh, Capitals fan. Uh, and I... Washington everything fan. Washington everything. Yeah, he, he's... I got to hand it to him. He loves his local sports. He's even a Redskins fan. God bless us all. Um but I'm a uh, Ravens fan, and an avid Ravens fan at that, and I'm also big into the Vegas Golden Knights hockey team. Uh, that Lost team is five. that. Okay, Chris, thanks. That team is very near and dear to my heart because uh, they came to Vegas the same same uh, month and year that I came to Vegas. So uh, there's a special connection there, and I've been to about a dozen, maybe eleven games. Uh, since they started and so it's always an electric time going to the to the games and all that and uh, best believe the playoff banter between me and Chris as the Golden Knights were playing against the Capitals was a one so again I appreciate both of you gentlemen joining me on this podcast I am excited to see uh, where this goes and if it goes nowhere oh well we're going to be on here chatting anyway so <laughs> um, that's man, true this is true. I mean, we're buddies. We get on here. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll be sitting in Discord just playing video games, and Chris will pop in out of nowhere. I won't even post it on Twitter. I won't post it anywhere. I won't even send him a DM like, hey, get on Twitter or get on Discord. Let's talk. He'll just jump on Discord and be like, what's up? You know, and we'll just talk. We'll just start talking. You know, that I always hang out in Discord. So if you ever want to chat, that's where I'm at. Um, guys, I can't believe we're almost a quarter way done with this year. Uh, 2019 is already been a blur for me um it's it's quite amazing actually uh all the different opportunities that i've been given this year hopefully we will get into exactly what that is later on in the podcast maybe not this episode but future episodes but 2019 by far in these last three months has been one of the best years of my life and again i'll get into that some more one of the things that uh has been really really grinding my gears lately is uh, I can't go anywhere. I can't go to get a sandwich. I can't go to work without people talking about the NCAA March Madness and their brackets. Right now you're talking about it and making it worse. And their brackets. Well, what's, I, I don't mind them talking about it. It's the fact that they asked me about mine and because I'm not part of it this year, which is I think the first time in seven or eight years that I have not participated in brackets. Um, you know, they're like, they're being weird about it, you know, that I didn't join in on their football, on their uh, basketball pool. It is what it is. Um, basketball still a sport. Yes, it's still a sport, and uh, college fo college football is actually um, gaining numbers on the NFL soon. So I wouldn't be surprised if that overtakes the NFL at some point. And they still won't pay the players. Uh, and again, I, I think that's a very fluid situation. I believe that at some point, college football players will have to get paid for everything that they do. Um, and I, I did have a brief conversation about this with uh, fellow content creator Bangle. And there's no secret about this. There's a lot of like under the table uh, payments and transactions going on at the NCAA does not know about. So, um, happens every coaches time lose their bro. job every year for that. This is true, absolutely. Um, you know, I've heard a lot of retired NFL players talk about the things they've gotten. Uh, you know, for instance, Ed Reed talking about, you know, of course, is after his retirement, um, talking about how when he was a uh, Miami Hurricane, he went into a dealership looking for a vehicle for a test drive, and uh, I guess the sales manager found out who he was and kind of came over to him and said, hey, uh, what kind of car do you like? And Ed Reed's like, well, I like this one, but I can't really afford it. And he's like, the owner's like, oh, you like this car? Here, take it, it's yours. 
Just like that, done. And uh, just, there's there's just certain perks. Like, just like a Ravens player always taking a handout. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I don't know much about college. I do know though that uh, that kind of stuff goes on under the table. So, um, what about you guys? Anything kind of catch your eye this month or this year so far um, that you want to talk about on here? Like, like what? As far as basketball like, goes, I like don't watch anything. basketball. Any, I have a life. No, no, not pertaining to just basketball, but anything. Because <laughs> um, there anything recently that's been grinding your gears, Chris? I don't have to ask you. I already know there's always something on your daily blotter <laughs> that grinds your gears. Um, but well, so I'll just... defer it in and then I'll jump in in a bit. Okay. So, you got anything, Sarge? I mean, not really. I hate having to work on my car. What's wrong with your car now? Nothing. Now, now my uh, my air conditioner actuator, the one that turns the that switches the uh, the uh, vents that it uses. Like if you go from the floor vents to the uh, defrost or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's making noise and it's annoying. And I don't I don't have the energy to fix it. Well, you know what? Sometimes uh, you just gotta pull up with put. You have to put up with the uh, the clicking noise. It'll go away eventually. It sounds like a freaking M60 when I get in my car. I don't I even have to. I don't even have to turn my car on. I open I, the door. I know exactly what that is. I've Jesus had it. Christ. I had it with my uh, Chevy Impala. That, if I'm not mistaken, that's what you drive too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I had. It's a common problem with the uh, late 2000s uh, Chevy Impalas, uh, where you get in and it sounds like just like you said, an M16 is shooting off full auto, and it's always funny when you first turn on the car. To drive around and see people looking at your car because it sounds like there's ra- like active <laughs> rounds being fired well, no, inside they, the vehicle. They see the FBI agent driving the <laughs> car. I'm not an <laughs> FBI <laughs> agent. I am not an FBI agent. That's exactly couldn't, why they're looking couldn't at tell you. us even if you were. Oh, so my goodness, you guys are a handful. I can already tell this podcast going to make then, me quit. And I tell you what, my biggest thing with my car is that I just paid about a year nine to 18 months ago to have my brakes done and I'm did you bring this up at the town hall meeting again. no I don't go to town hall meeting <laughs> number one but but I, I, you think it at least last three or four years you know when you pay $300 to get new brakes and damn things are squeaking again not all the oh. time but it's well, supposed to you know, there's a, such a thing as wear and tear, right? And probably I, with your driving, you probably slam on the brakes every time you go to brake. Wrong. I don't okay. have to drive. I mean, it depends on what brake pads you get, too. I mean, if you get crap cheap brake pads, they're not going to last very long anyway. That's true. You get That's the ones true. that are made completely out of graphite, they're garbage. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So it looks like that expense is coming up again. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's like that's the two guaranteed lot. things with vehicles, right? They're going to depreciate the second you drive them off the lot. And number two, they are a money pit. Um, there's oh. always going to be something that needs fixing. There's always going to be something that um, you can take it to a mechanic. Hopefully you have a, one that you trust where they won't try to screw you. But usually they go in there and be like, well, here's the thing. You kind of need a brand new this. You need this. You need some headlight fluid. Some people fall for that. It's like, okay, let me get some headlight fluid. Uh... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh... <laughs> exactly. So, it's... Yeah, what should cost $200 winds up being a, close to $1,000 by the time they're done <laughs> totally. telling you everything you need. I totally thought you were going to say you fell for that. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not doing that. He would be the one to fall for headlight I fluid. I think I'm the biggest dumbass in the world, but I'm really not. I didn't say that. Nobody I just, said that, Chris. No, no, the context of the conversation, I thought Nobody, you were going to say that. It was heavily implied, though. <laughs> I didn't say anything so, like that. I can't, uh, although I'm not the at, at all a baseball fan, I can't deny what I'm seeing on social media. There's a lot of people I follow, um, as well as some people I don't follow, but a lot of respected names in the gaming industry. Um, they are really talking a lot about this MLB 19. Uh, Chris, are you? You're obviously going to be getting it, right? I already have. It. You already have it. What do you think about the game? It's a lot harder than last year because the uh, 
they increased the speed of the pitches so by the time he's been off but yeah it looks so, beautiful if Madden could do a tenth of what Sony does with half to well half to a quarter of the team you know EA should be ashamed of themselves frankly yeah, I've had a number of different people tell me I should get a PS4 just for MLB I just I gotta be honest with you I'm 31 years old and I do not know the rules of baseball nor do I know exactly how it's played um, here's here's what I'll do I'll find a MLB to show video you don't oh, watch no. the whole game just watch five minutes of it and look at the Bro, how good the game I will was. be knocked out cold <laughs> asleep three minutes in I didn't mean like tonight I mean at some point just watch the video no like even after a full night's rest three minutes into a baseball video I'm, I'm out I'm just kidding no I'm open minded with things like that you know um, I, I, I want to obviously it's always a good feature about a, a good attribute to be a person that always is eager to learn more um so yeah, I mean, I'm I'm interested to a certain extent to at least know how the sport works, um, and you know if I, it comes uh, turns out to be something I'm interested in, then we'll play it by ear. But until then, I don't even know how the game's played. Um, Sarge, what are you playing these days? Uh, I've been playing Magic. I've got a Magic: The Gathering Arena. It's a free game. There's no reason not to try it. But that's um, a, that's PC exclusive, right? Right now it is, yeah. It's still in beta. It's, they're supposed to be trying to bring it out to phones and maybe consoles. Gotcha. Um, but uh, other than that, I've been playing The Division 2. It's awesome, by the way. It's an outstanding game, as long as you have somebody to play with. If you don't have somebody to play it with, randoms are garbage. And that will be true for the existence of any game. And Mortal Kombat 11 beta starts next weekend, or this weekend. Mm. I'll be doing that. You're streaming yeah, that. Come I, watch. I played. Um, I played the beta of uh, that game you're talking about. What was it called again? The uh, which one? The Tom Clancy game you just mentioned. Oh, the Division Two. Division Two. I played the beta and I uh, didn't like it. I thought you played it was... the beta for the first one. I'm not saying it's a huge. I played difference. the beta for the first one and I bought the game because I thought it was actually good. But um, but yeah. So. I don't what know. didn't you like about it? I'm, but as far as what I don't like about it is that it's uh, the controls are way too clunky. Like it, those controls were okay several years back when the first one came out, but it's 2019. Uh, we expect a little bit more fluid fluidity to the animations and uh, the old school, you know, um, Tom Clancy snap on snap off cover system is absolutely atrocious. Um, it worked in some games like Years of War, but it's it's just not. It doesn't feel like 2019 quality that you uh, expect from video games nowadays. Um, you realize there's like literally a ton of games that still use that. Right, but I don't know. Some some games seem like they look better doing it because uh, it's not as rigid. It's uh, there's more fluidity to the animations, is what I'm saying. So what you're saying is you're nitpicking because you don't want to buy the game. In, in essence, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> don't try to bullshit a bullshitter. So. This is true. I won't. My bad. <laughs> no, so. I, I played. I played a little bit with with Alex. I had uh, bought it on. I pre-ordered it on PC, and because uh, a bunch of my friends and stuff at work, well, mm -hmm. guys I know at work, we we're gonna play it. Shout out to Alex Purple Swordfish, by the way, fellow content creator. And. Uh, he had it on the PC, so or he had it on the the Xbox. So I went ahead and got it on Xbox. Oh, okay. Um, In fact, my first stream of it was with Alex. With Alex, okay. Yeah. So, um, by the way, I didn't mention this earlier, but I figured I'd throw this in there now. Um, we, the platform of these podcasts, is us kind of doing it as a pre-recorded podcast but it's also going to be as a youtube premiere so uh what you're listening to now uh the first time through we're going to make it live and then it's going to be saved as an archive on the channel uh one to where you can go back to it anytime and listen to it um, at your own leisure so um 
something funny happened to me last week, and I didn't know whether to be disgusted or to burst out laughing. Uh, so there's this barbecue joint here in Vegas. Uh, they pride themselves on being... Okay. Huh? I said, okay, I'm listening. Okay. Um, thanks, Chris. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so they pride themselves on being the, the, uh, the best barbecue joint in Las Vegas or in the Las Vegas area. You can Google it if you want. Um, but I'm in there waiting for my food. I called in in advance and I, and I, um, I roll through and I'm waiting in line because the food's not ready yet. And, uh, there's a lady and her daughter, maybe her daughter's like four or five years old. And, uh, they're standing behind me also waiting for their food. And, um, it's dead quiet. It's dead quiet. We don't hear the servers talking anymore. It's just, you know, you pull one of those things just not to be awkward. You pull your phone out and kind of start scrolling through the apps. You know what's on there, but you're scrolling anyway just to make sure uh, that, uh, you know, you're not being awkward. And just at that moment, this girl looks up at her mom and says, Mom! Mom! And just like that, like really loud. And she said, I farted! And everybody that was seated around us at the restaurant kind of looked over and uh, kind of looked at me, assuming that she was my daughter. I don't have any kids, by the way. Um, and her mom, other than people calling you dad on the screen. Yeah, that's always <laughs> awkward. By the way, if you show up to my streams, please don't call me dad. Um, Why not? It, it, it's just weird. Do you understand how weird it is? Um, no, I have three kids that all call me dad. Okay. Think about it this way. When I stream, when I stream, I don't view it as like I'm putting on a performance. Everybody in my stream is usually chill. I don't really get that many viewers, maybe 20, 30 max. It's to me, when I'm playing video games and I got viewers like that, I feel like they're all like chilling at my place and we're just playing video games. Now, it, it makes me absolutely cringe to think that one of those people I'm quote unquote chilling with and having a good time, having some snacks with, you know, chilling, watching the stream, out of, out of the blue starts calling me dad. That- Well, you have a lot of 12 year olds coming to That is true. And I don't know, I don't really you know- You could possibly be their dad. I don't know what the driving force behind this is. There's probably some meme I'm not aware of, but um, it's definitely very uh, cringy when somebody calls you dad. I don't know, Sarge, you just started streaming. Have you gotten that yet? No, nobody calls me dad on my streams. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully it stays that way. And hopefully by me mentioning this just now, it doesn't drive uh, for that to happen. Please, guys, don't do that. It's really cringeworthy. Um, and it makes the streamer feel really uncomfortable. Um, so, yeah, just just be chill. Come through and just chill. And uh, don't do any of that kind of stuff, especially if you're a, a boy. And you're calling a streamer your dad that's a guy too like that's a, that's a no, whole nother level of uh awkward but it's um, only a little creepy though it's a, it's a little bit creepy yeah that's a lot creepy actually in my opinion <laughs> so um actually before doing this podcast like i said i was trying to kill the clock a little bit uh to wait for midnight eastern time you know because you guys are both on the east coast um but it's funny because one of the two people that I've given my number out to um, gave me, or I, I gave, I gave them a call, and we ended up talking for like three hours and forty-five minutes. It was really cool to catch up. And this person um, no longer comes to the streams on a regular basis, like uh, like they used to. But um, it's 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 one of those interesting bonds where it's like, all right, you know, you got a friend in this person, and. Um, you know, you could not talk to them for seven, eight a months or even a year. You can just spark up a conversation out of nowhere. And it's like you just talked to them yesterday. Um, I really am blessed in that regard that being on YouTube has allowed me to have relationships like that, uh, that those kind of friendships. So um, I, I just want to share that. That was a really cool thing that happened tonight. So, oh, well, Sarge, you know what? You'll get that, too. You'll get that too. Um, I'll probably one day give you my number too. Well, when I become a when I become a when I become a giant, you know, YouTube Moogle like you, uh, I'm not. I'm not at all. I gotta start making them big YouTube bucks. 
No, there are. You know what? Here's how do you, how do you claim that on your and W2? And your FBI agent salary. First of all, I'm not an FBI agent, Chris. <laughs> Damn it. Stop. Um, there's a, I'm glad you mentioned that. There's a common like misconception amongst the viewers. I, I, I don't want to call them consumers uh, because we're all viewers. Uh, we all consume YouTube. I will say I have my favorite YouTubers. Uh, those of you guys who have been following me a while, you know, Joe Rogan podcast is my number one. Second place is not even close. But um, there's a common misconception amongst viewers and or consumers on YouTube that number one, they think that they can start up a YouTube channel and it'll take off off the ground immediately and it will be the next Jake Paul or whoever it is they're watching at the moment. The second thing is they assume that because you have a capture card on your computer and you have a, a compatible console that works with that capture card and you're able to stream, so you have the internet bitrate requirements, that you're automatically rich or that you are making a killing on YouTube. I will tell you, and it's, I don't know if it's against TOS for me, YouTube TOS for me to dispel any of this. Uh, I'm, I won't get into the exact numbers, believe me, there are no numbers. But <laughs> there, if you are listening to no this moves. podcast, there were no moves. If you're listening to this podcast and you want to make a good YouTube channel and you, you think you're going to be successful, beautiful. Stick with that and don't let anyone tell you that, uh, that you can't make it. Put in the effort. Um, do what you like. Be unique. Pro do content that you like and people will flock to you because it'll show. When you do something you love, it shows. Now, <laughs> if you get into YouTube with another mindset thinking that you're going to be paying your bills, okay, you're going to have every bill paid off, you're going to have no financial uh, hardship at all, you are sadly disappointed. Uh, <laughs> at this point, where I'm at right now, again, I won't get into the exact numbers, I am not even able to pay for a portion of my $40 water bill um, as it is. So, and some water bill. some months, I don't even get paid because YouTube has this weird thing where uh, if you don't make at least $100 that month, they won't even bother to waste the paper to cut you a check, okay? So there's some months I go, I don't even get paid. Wait Until a minute, how, how can you not pay your $40 water bill if you get $100 or more? Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. Listen to me, Chris. Open your ears. I'm saying some months you don't get paid because you don't make that hundred dollar threshold. So you. Have but to I'm saying if you make it, then you've paid your water bill and double for two months, and still have twenty bucks left over for your lunch, where the girl can fart in front of you. <laughs> oh my god! See, my daughter would totally do that. She, she would, would fart in a public place turn around and look at me and say I farted yeah and then go about her business like nothing ever happened yeah <laughs> and, Kids and, do the weirdest stuff man. here's it another thing great. too here's another thing too is so we've got those two things covered if you want to be big you have to have that attitude that you're going to get big on YouTube you have to be positive about yourself number two you are not going to make money right off the bat in fact there's going to be a lot of investment that's going to take place um, I started uh, I transitioned 1, my channel over 4,000 watch hours before you can even get yeah so perfect monetized. example Sarge is on YouTube he can't even monetize yet because he doesn't meet that qualification which by the way guys give his channel some love hit him with a subscribe he's a quality dude but um, he's not even able to get his channel monetized right now because he doesn't meet the YouTube qualifications which remind me again there are a thousand subs and what else 1,000 subs, 4,000 hours of watch time. I've See, actually gotten about half of the watch time. Okay. Nowhere near 1,000 subs. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's the thing I will give you kudos for is you stream quite often. You stream a lot more often than I do. At this point, I'm, 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 I'm at... Twice a week. <laughs> yeah, I stream once a week. So, so you have me there. But um, like I said, there's going to be a lot of investment. And, and Sarge, as small as your channel is, you've made that investment as well. Capture cards aren't free. Green screens are not free. Um, I hate to be petty with this, but the lighting in videos, guess what? If you want those green screens to work, you gotta buy some pretty high quality lights, which by the way, are extremely warm. Um, they heat up your room like you wouldn't believe, which causes you to turn on your air conditioning. Um, 
So literally, it's 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 a lot of investment. So it's not going to be given to you. You kind of have to put aside some money to get into the YouTube game. And once you're in it, it's just like a cascading. Um, what do I want to say? A cascading no pattern idea. of money spending. There's always going to be that new thing that comes out, a new webcam. There's going to be a new console. There's going to be a new game that comes out that your subscribers want you to buy. It's going to be that. Expect that if you're going to be an up, up and coming YouTuber. Um, and you might be saying, Double R, you got 15,000 subs and not so many people come to your streams. Well, I've been there. I've, I've been to the pinnacle. I've 2016 was the best year I've ever had on YouTube and I don't think it'll ever get that way again um, Again, it's because I was doing a lot of things that uh, some of you guys do or see other youtubers doing is being um, Regular with the upload content and uploads upload schedule You remember Sarge you remember Chris how many times a week did I stream in tw uh, 2016 per week? Uh, probably like three or four three or four. Yeah yeah, well, I went back and looked at the dates. It's more like five or six times a week. Some weeks I only took one day off. And that's why in 2016, I gained over 10,000 subs. It oh, I'm a, sorry, sir. I have children. It was a tremendous year. But I, I ex exactly, life happens. You have kids, you have work. I have an odd work schedule, which precludes me from streaming. Um, Life happens, and you know what? We all have different goals in life. For me, I, from now, you know, I, I've already made the decision that YouTube is not going to be a source of income. I thoroughly enjoy doing YouTube, but it's a hobby to me. It will always be that for me. It, it's been that since day one. Uh, I just enjoy being on here with you guys. I love streaming for you guys. Um, I'm not the best at video games. Uh, you guys can see that pretty clearly when you show up to yeah, my streams. You're, you're pretty bad. I am pretty bad, but I do enjoy it. I have, play Josh. I have a I passion. Am. I have a passion for what I do, and it is a hobby. It's been a hobby of mine since I was a little young lad, as our friends say across the pond. You know, I grew up with um, Ninja Gaiden, the first one, the NES, followed by Super Mario Brothers, Doctor Mario, even. Um, so I've had a long Dr. history. Mario was the shit. It was so good. Are you kidding me? That game, that game crushed Tetris, in my opinion. Crushed it. I don't know. There's only 20 levels. Yeah, but it kind of gets. You can you can go higher, but you're pretty much guaranteed to lose after that. Yeah, and you got to remember, I was what five, six years old, years old when I was playing that game. So it's not exactly the easiest for uh, a little kid. But uh, yeah, I've, I've beaten that game before. I've never did get around to beating Ninja Gaiden though, or Super Mario Brothers three. So it might be for the best. Probably, I, I eventually should probably get a ROM like a lot of people do on their computer and just uh, try to finish up the game just for old time's sake. Uh, uh, I mean, to be honest, every ROM that I own, I actually have a game. Word. So I bought the game. Oh, okay. So you've had, and I download the ROM. You have a physical copy of the game, in other words. Yeah, like Chrono Trigger. I've bought I've bought Chrono Trigger probably seven times. What was your first ever console? Uh, my first console was like an Atari thirty something hundred. Dang. I don't know. I was I was a kid. We were poor when I was a kid, so Nintendo was out for like two years before I got a Nintendo. Yeah. No, I mean, we weren't the, the most well-off either, man. Um, I really, really wanted a Nintendo Game Gear. My parents always said no. Yeah, right, you one percenter. Whatever. No, I'm not. Jesus. All right, you Chris. You messed up. I had to get a Game Gear. <laughs> I didn't even get a Game Boy until, What's like, up? Game Boy so, Advance was out. Okay, I have the Game Boy Color. Let's get that right. So, <laughs> so Chris, I know you have a PS4. Uh, I don't know where things went wrong, but at some point, you had to have begun your gaming uh, career. What was your first ever console that you've ever played on? Dreamcast. Sega Dreamcast. Nice. Um, I got that from a Sega. Local, I got that from a local electronic store in Illinois in uh, the city of Skokie called Montgomery Ward back in Which? Uh, back when that store first came out and uh, I remember falling in love with that console after seeing that Sonic game being demoed I'm like mom I gotta have this console so she's like alright get the grades and you got it and sure enough I 
put the effort in, studied and got got my uh, console. So it was a great console. Next year you get your DD. I know, right? Which, by the way, um, just is why they started making um, uh, NFL 2K, which still has presentation wise better elements than uh, Madden. Wait, you're saying NFL 2K5 has better presentation than Madden 19? Well, I mean, they had the studio show with Chris Berman, and they can't even do a halftime show on Madden still. I want to say you're wrong, but I'm so tired. I'm just so tired of not getting anything really new. From 15 years, but they had a lot more depth to 2K5 than... uh, um, they do Madden still today. So Bro, here's, Madden here's, never going to beat when they used to have the uh, the ambulance come onto the field and run the other players over oh as they get the injured so player. Good. So good. But they, I don't even have the, they don't even have the cart come onto the field. Again. Nope. They don't, they don't want to glorify injuries. That's what it is. Dude, Madden doesn't even commentate in his own games anymore. Who knows where Madden. John... Where's the John Madden? Can we get him for, a, for an opinion? <laughs> Where's he Let me at? just call him up on my bat phone real quick. I, if you're I the FBI, him, you'd be able to locate him faster I, I, than I would. I want to get John Madden's opinion on the state of his own game. If he's proud of the product that's out there right now. And I'm not bashing the game. I just, if I'm paying $60, which by the way, last year I paid, um, all right, I'm just going to be clear with you guys. So I got, you didn't uh, pay anything. I got one free copy and I ended up buying two additional copies. So I spent a hundred and twenty dollars on on. Why this, would you buy the same thing three times? To give know. away. To give away. Remember, I did a giveaway. I was running a campaign on my channel to do a giveaway. I can't believe I spent a hundred and twenty bucks on this game. I really can't. I really cannot because it doesn't feel like something that's worth. And, and it's kind of an outlandish statement, but it doesn't feel like it's worthy of the console we played on. If you watch some of these other games and see what the Xbox One, or you know what, Chris, for your sake, even the PS4 Pro, it, just looking at those two consoles and seeing exactly what they're capable of, and the product that we're buying every single year from Madden, it, it's not even worth the console it's play, it's being played on. Let's be real. Um, and, and I don't mean to cheap shot anybody who's ever helped me from EA. There's a couple people who follow me who do work directly for EA, some people who are affiliated with EA. I'm not talking about you when I say this, okay? So no disrespect. But I really do believe that in order for change to happen, it has to come from the top. Um, Well, I mean, they're probably not on the top of EA's list of people that work for EA. Well, here's the thing. What I was going to suggest is that they drain the swamp. Get rid of everyone, clean house, you know, uh, bring in fresh mindset, fresh work ethic, fresh new design team. Seems like they've allocated all their design resources to Mutt, which if you guys don't play Mutt um, in Madden or at all, it's pretty much a pay to win game system that they've uh, kind of built as a one-off um, mode in in Madden itself. It's a, it's a cash grab, it's, it's quite obvious, and they put all of their resources on that, and um, it doesn't seem like they care about much else. Online head-to-head is being vastly neglected, in my opinion. Um, but they put every kind of thing imaginable in mud. And it's kind of disappointing. Uh, it's disappointing for the old-school people like you, me, um, that like to play Madden because they want to have a good time and not because we want to pull out our wallets and shell out cold, hard cash for not nonsensical in-game microtransactions. End of my well, log. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could say it's nonsensical to you, but people are still shelling out money for it, so it's it makes sense to somebody. It makes sense to somebody, but that's that's their driving force, right? If you take away people who, um, if you take away people who spent money on mutt, Madden has no future. So that is their that demographic of people who buy microtransactions and uh, buy cards and stuff in-game transactions. They keep Madden afloat. I will say, I have no you problem. Spend your money on whatever you want, bro. I agree. <laughs> I agree. And and I'll add another stipulation to that. You spend your money however you want. 
But if you're gonna have microtransactions in a game, why don't you do kind of take a, a page out of Fortnite's book or Apex Legends book? Make the game free. Be terrible. Listen, make the game free, but make millions. I'm talking millions on in game microtransactions. We're not talking about pay to win. If you played Apex Legends, if you played Fortnite, you know those microtransactions don't help you get better at the game. They don't make your bullets land in your opponent's faces. They don't they don't let you, you know, do anything that you can't do without a wallet, without a credit card. It just gives you like cool little aesthetic boosts. Makes your guy look cooler, gives him a nice little paraglider, you know, aesthetics, visuals only. Okay? But in Madden, if they want to do that, make the game free. If you're going to have microtransactions, make the game free and make That's your. Never. Weren't they weren't they toying with that for a minute? They were like, they were going to make like a one game and just keep updating that game. It's EA, bro. EA is not going to do that. Look at what happened with their uh, with their uh, Star Wars Battlefield game. It flopped. They wanted to charge you money at every loading screen. That was the first game I've ever heard of that got sued for putting microtransactions as like their lead source of income for the game. Yeah, bro. <laughs> the, the transactions on every loading screen. You can't quit to the main menu without them saying, are you sure you want to purchase this? Like, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> Are you sure you want to pay $25 to turn your Xbox off? I just don't get it, man. I think... It's, that's I, a sad one, too, because I love some Star Wars. And when you make the game so bent on getting those microtransactions, I can't support it. Right. Yeah, so, well, just every move to have to pay just bleeds you dry. Yeah. And Especially if you're charging for the game on top of it. Exactly. That's where I have a problem with it. $60 game, and then you gotta pay hundreds of dollars just to upgrade your stuff so you have a chance at getting something you want, but you'll more than likely get something that's completely useless, and you'll never touch it. Yeah. Just like in Madden, you wanna pay these money to get these cards, and you end up getting like the base level elite cards out of the pack instead of getting that 99 overall card they advertise on the thing. Right. Well, they, they do the same thing in MLB the show with Diamond Dynasty, but they, I don't know, because I don't usually play much, but they do like programs and then different rewards programs that you can earn cards for that you can't pay for too. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I think they kind of do that too. But like I so, said, man, I, I'm all for microtransactions. I'm all for people wasting their money however they seem fit heck i see it on a daily basis i live in las vegas i see people waste and squander away their money on a daily basis you know what's but, funny though every year i say i'm not gonna buy madden but you do every year i end up buying Madden. yeah <laughs> because let's face it you're a hardcore stealer fan i'm a hardcore ravens fan i want to play with my team i want to i want to get into the head-to-head -head kind of mentality play my friends online prove i'm the better madden player using my team with updated rosters that's it i don't care about mutt i don't care about uh franchise i don't care about well, oh well you see, might I, I like i like my favorite mode in madden is where you can play as a player because I can always go and play as my wide receiver because I was a wide receiver in high school. Live out my sad fantasy of having not gotten in trouble for smoking <laughs> weed and gotten that scholarship <laughs> and made something of myself as far as football goes. But it's, I just think it's fun. I, li I like playing as, as like the create your own player thing. I don't really do the coaching too much because I like when I lose to be able to blame it on the defense or blame it on the offense, whichever one I'm not playing on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's always it's always someone else's fault. I get it. Well, it is. It's always someone else's fault. When you're always right, it's a terrible burden. <laughs> That's quite true. But there's no way that they're not going to have those micro transactions as an option because I mean, A, they budget those in for their budget at EA. 
And if it's uh, anywhere, though. Yeah, but but also, you know, I don't feel like they pressure you to buy them, I will say. It's just like, if you want... But like you said, it's like buying a lottery scratcher and hoping you pull the 99 card and you... And you win like a penny on the scratcher, if anything, you know? That's the thing, though. They do pressure you because every loading screen is a mutt loading screen. Yep. It's always an ad for some mutt pack. Every single loading screen. Unless you're playing, unless you're loading up a a franchise game, then they get started taking screenshots of of the games that you've played on your franchise and putting that in the loading screen. But it's... Like, if you go into, like, a, a play-a-friend mode, it's mutt. You get mutt loading screens. Buy this pack. Get Michael Vick. How many yeah, times have we seen Michael Vick in the game? It's Michael. all a big cash grab. And you, you know what? Kids love it. Kids go for it. And, again, that's EA's lifeblood. Spend your money but how you want, it. but make the game free. Um, you're going to get millions uh, upon millions on microtransactions. Make the game free for a regular, everyday consumer that doesn't care about MUT or any of the other associated features that um, uh, entail some sort of microtransactions. But it's why would, never going to happen, though. Game, why, why do you say it's never going to happen? We are literally watching... Th- didn't Apex Legend just get their 50 millionth player get their game? It's there a, are microtransactions in every game, whether listen, it's cosmetic or not. not. You're still pressured to buy microtransactions. You are not hearing me. Pressuring to to buy microtransactions and actually having to not pay for a game is different than paying for a game and then also being pressured to get microtransactions. Apex Legends is free. Fortnite is free. Both of these game developers have made a fortune off of in-game microtransactions, aesthetic microtransactions. Okay? I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying... You're not going to find a game anymore. No, but, but you said it would never happen. You're never going to get a game that doesn't have microtransactions now. Even that, like I was watching Narcos play, play, play Devil May Cry. Devil May Cry has microtransactions where you can buy stuff to upgrade Dante or whatever the hell, whatever character you're playing as. Even though you can get that stuff naturally throughout the game. He even makes, he even jokes about it. He's like, who needs to buy these microtransactions his, his characters get maxed out by the end of the game anyway yeah that's true but they're still there they're still an option to speed along your process I mean even the game that I was talking about that Magic the Gathering game it's it has microtransactions where you can buy packs to speed up building your collection but you don't have to spend a cent on it just because you don't have to doesn't mean they're not going to include ways for you to do it right you're right, and we'll see. Uh, I'm hoping for a, a better future ahead. I, I would hope that EA would open their eyes and see how the big dogs are doing and how how fruitful uh, their endeavors have become. Such but as, if you're not going to spend a penny on uh, Mutt, why are they just going to give you a free game when they know you'll drop to 60? And that's exactly the conundrum they're in. Exactly. That that it, right there is exactly the issue. If they know for a fact that you're not going to buy any microtransactions like I did, I spent zero dollars on Mutt this year. I didn't even play it, actually. I played Mutt Drafts. If they know I'm not going to spend any money, you're right. They have a right to say, no, you're not getting a free game. For what? You're absolutely right. Yeah, and that's why it's not going to happen. Because well, there's here's probably... The thing. When you say it's not going to happen, the problem I have with that is the two, the most played games right now on YouTube gaming and Twitch are what? Fortnite and Apex Legends. How can you say it's not going to happen when those are two free games that everyone is playing? Because they never charge for them. And you don't My play point, either of those Exactly. Either. And you don't play the free games either. It's because I suck at shooters. But just because I suck doesn't mean that 50 million people aren't enjoying the game right now as we speak. Because they are. Think about that. If one person from those 50 million players, if one person made one EA transaction, one in-game transaction, they're going to make a fortune. That's the mindset that EA Sports has to have. 
uh, going forward, I think, if they want to be successful. Um, but the people who do it do it anyway, still do it, and they get the 60 bucks on top of it. Yeah. So I don't see how it's advantageous for EA to just say, okay, you know, if the microtransactions drop 30%, 40%, maybe they'll they consider and go oh wow we're not getting the revenue but as long as that they're getting the 60 and the uh, microtransactions I don't see why it would be advantageous for them to put it on the uh, Xbox and PlayStation stores for free I just don't yeah I, I mean you have a point you know uh, why should they give us something we're not entitled to you're absolutely right but uh Again, it's working for other developers, and uh, it's really hard to see EA go down the wrong path when other de- game developers are doing it a lot better and more efficiently. And I'll leave it at that. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, end the stream and the podcast here. Uh, appreciate everyone who's listening to this right now. If you like it, please smash that like button. Uh, if you have any suggestions, any comments for anything that we've said, how to improve this podcast or anything we've mentioned this podcast that uh, that maybe you have a differing viewpoint on, we'd love to hear it. Put your comment down below. As always, I'm going to have um, the Twitter accounts of both the co-hosts down in the description as well as Sergeant Kicker's um, YouTube channel down there as well. Let's help them get to a thousand K so we can start making some money on YouTube. How about that? We look forward to seeing you next time for episode two. Goodbye.